Hi, my name is Valerie and you're watching Insight. And I'm joined here with a very, very special guest. And um, I've admired him for so long and he is an actor, a writer, producer, everything pretty much. And mm -hmm. um, he's an awesome friend and his name is Mr. Tom Gossam. And I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about um, yourself and your company. Well, first of all, <laughs> this is a switch. Yes. <laughs> You're interviewing me instead of me interviewing exactly. you, huh? Yeah, that's the way we started. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, You've been doing you. this for a while now. Right. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Tom Gossam was actually the original host for Insight like several years ago. Our show has been on, I think, for over like four years now, I would like think, four and a half. Yeah. Wow, a long time. So you're the original host. So it's kind of cool to be. But you're you know, doing a fantastic yeah, job. Thanks. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, introduce myself. I've, I've been. Um, in relation to this project, it certainly surrounds sports. Uh, I was a college football player at Auburn. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was, we're, in, like we're shooting this in Black History Month, and I was the mm -hmm. first African-American athlete to graduate from Auburn University. Um, I've been, uh, been in film and television for a long time, uh, working on different TV shows. Started out on In the Heat of the Night. Um, I've worked ER, West Wing, NYPD Blues, so on and so forth. A lot of films, Fight Club, Jeepers Creepers and stuff. So, And uh, for this this interview, we're talking about a film I produced called Quiet Courage. So, and I, I do some consulting work and stuff, just mainly in the communications realm, just, just having a lot of fun. Well, that's exciting. Just the stuff that you just listed is pretty cool. Like you named some really cool films that you're involved with. So um, before we get into uh, your film um, that you're talking about uh, with Quiet Girl, like um, why did you really get into acting? What about acting that you just really loved? Just curious. <laughs> Can't tell you the truth. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> that's for another show, I guess. <laughs> that's for, no, that's that, for off the air. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, um, I always liked it. Mm -hmm. I always, I, I mean, I can watch, I'm a Turner Classic Movies guy. Mm -hmm. I can watch movies from the 40s and 50s, and I can, I can not only tell you who the stars are, mm -hmm. I can tell you who the three, four, five, six actors really? are on that show. Just love film. And uh, started doing some workshops in Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama. Uh, from there, I did my first production. I did my first production, I was uh, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, I started doing community theater. I got, got pretty good at it. I, I would win all the acting awards in Birmingham mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And uh, I did a show one night and the next day I got a phone call mm -hmm. from a lady. She said she was a casting agent. I said, okay, well, what's a casting agent? <laughs> she said, well, I cast people for film and television. There was a guy in town to shoot a film. He had come to the theater the night before. He'd seen my performance and he decided that he wanted me in his film. He wrote a part for me. I got my SAG card and I started doing it from there. And, um, you know, I, uh, in, that started about 83. Mm -hmm. uh, in 95, 96, I did a film called Miss Everest Boys for HBO. Mm -hmm. My wife and I went out to the premiere. Another one of those things happened <laughs> after I had some, re did some really good work there. And afterwards, um, uh, a guy comes up to me and he was from a top five agency in Los Angeles and he says, you know, if you consider moving to Los Angeles, we'd love to represent you. Two weeks later, I was in Los Angeles and uh, did that for the next 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a, a great ride. I've probably worked in 13, different, 13 14 different states, um, just worked with all different kinds of people and just been a lot of fun. And fortunately, I was able to make a living at it. So. Well, that's awesome. That's an yeah. interesting story. And yeah. maybe one time I'll listen to the whole story and we don't have time for this one. But um, well, that leads me on to what we're really here to talk about. And that's with your film, Quiet Courage, mm -hmm. on the James Curtis Owen story. So mm -hmm. what about that story that really got you started? Like, why did you want to do exactly that Well, story? I grew up in Birmingham. Now, I, in Birmingham uh, at that time was we were dealing with segregation. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Birmingham and, and of course, kids wouldn't understand this today because it was pre-ESPN and all that <laughs> stuff. And so newspapers were really big. Uh. On Saturday mornings, you get the newspaper to see who'd had good games the night before. And this guy, James Owens, was the star. He was the best player in the state of Alabama. He was all state in football, all state in basketball and track. And in track, he ran a hundred yard dash and he threw the shot put. And you just don't find those yeah. kind of skills in one human being. 
Um, just admired him. I was very fortunate later that um, I got to go to Auburn with him. And so I knew his story. And um, I just thought it was just an incredible story. Um, dealing with what he had to deal with. Um, being a guy that not only recognized what he had to deal with and, and had a good career, but didn't have the great career that everyone thought that he would have yeah. and, and basically gave himself up uh, for the greater good. Oh, wow. That's like really interesting how you got started and stuff. So did you like know him like really personally or? I knew him after I got to Auburn. Okay. Uh, we played against him. They beat us like 35 oh. to nothing or something <laughs> like that. So, so not really that close. <laughs> no, we weren't that <laughs> close. But, we, you know, we're still close now. And I think the thing that makes the story so wonderful mm -hmm. and the tagline for the story is uh, James Owens was the Auburn's first African-American football player. James loved his university. She learned to love him back. And so this has been a 45 year relationship between mm -hmm. James and the university. It's had, it's, it's like a love story. It's had oh, its ups and yeah. downs. They come together, they go apart kind of thing. Um, there's a couple of surprises in the film that I won't tell you about um, that were really, really neat. Um, it's, uh, it's just an incredible story and uh, about an incredible man. And uh, I'm just, I'm proud that I got the opportunity to tell his story. Well, that sounds like really exciting, just the idea of, I mean, you do have the first bit of like, when you're in films, you're actually in the film, but to actually produce something and then, you know, see it grow and see. So how long was that process to actually, you know, produce something like this? You know, this process, because James has, James has health issues. Mm -hmm. And so the project wasn't developed on a normal schedule. Okay. It was determined that James's health issues at the time were pretty serious. And so it was, we need to shoot something so that we have something of James um, in the event. Okay. Um, so probably about a year and a half okay. I worked on it uh, because I was working on other projects mm -hmm. and, and shifting the schedule around. But um, it was great. I could shortcut because I knew this, I lived the story with right. it. And so I was able to, I, you know, instead of having to do a whole bunch of pre-interviews, I was, I knew the questions I wanted to ask. All the people I needed to interview knew me. Uh, and so I didn't have to go through a right. lot of permission things to, to get to the people That's I needed cool. to That's cool. That was really helpful. It was. And you know what? The cool things I bet people are watching now is like, oh, I'm really curious how it goes. Well, you actually brought us the uh, preview, the trailer for yes. the film. So actually, we're about to go on break. And before we go on break, you all will actually get to check out the trailer for The Quiet Courage. So check out the preview and then we'll be back right here on Insight. very quiet, he's very thoughtful, he digests the information and then he comes out with, uh, well, if this is what we need to do, then this is what we need to do. What a tremendous load to put on the, on the shoulders of a teenage kid. It's unbelievable. I can tell you right now, I wouldn't have been strong enough to carry that burden. My mother was in rehab and not doing very well. My mother said that when he left, he gave one of the most moving, prayers that she has ever heard in her life. That's James Owens. Having grown up in Birmingham in those days, which were at times scary, at times confusing and, and all those things. And there was so many, uh, there was so much fear of, uh, of the unknown. I think history has proven that James was the right person at the right time. However, even to use those terms, the right person at the right time is really an indictment of those times. Without him, excuse me, 
without him being aware of it. He contributed a lot to the university and to Auburn football. I always like to say he was Bo Jackson before there was a Bo Jackson. I felt an obligation when I came to Auburn. I didn't realize, uh, again, the magnitude. Uh, I didn't think about being the first black. All of those things never entered my mind as being the first. And it was I was playing something that I love, football. And once I got here, uh, the pressure was even greater. He was standing in the huddle. I guess we had ran about eight or nine times in a row. And I looked at him and big tears were coming out of his eyes. And he, he was grimacing with, with pain, I knew it was. And I asked him what was wrong. And he said, it's either my shoulder or my collarbone or my sternum. He said, he said I said, you okay? Let's get somebody else. He said, no. No. It's an honor, you know, and um, it, it makes me feel proud, you know, to wear the name on my back. I was in, in uh, Birmingham, UAB, to see if I'm eligible for a heart transplant. Uh, this is a struggle that I never thought I'd have to go through. Well, he said, you know, back then, I kind of felt alone. I don't think he realized, you know, uh, up until recently, his importance to the Auburn family. What he did was more courageous and has put a stamp in Auburn history, and especially athletics, being the first African-American football player to play at Auburn, I think is far beyond any awards, anything. He, he's just a special, courageous guy. And I asked you, look out here at all these players. Do they have any idea what price James paid for them to be there on the field? And I remember your answer instantly, no. No, they don't. And I know they don't. But we did, we knew. As a business owner, you know you need to stand out, highlighting what makes you unique. Cox Media understands that, so when it's time to get creative, to match message to image, where do you start? The Cox Media Creative Department helps translate your business strategy into creative strategy. Words, pictures, the whole show. We do compelling campaigns for video, the web, even video on the web. Be heard and be remembered. Let Cox Media customize a creative campaign for you. And we're back right here on Insight. I'm Valerie, and I'm joined here with Mr. Tom Gossam. And before the break, we actually got to see the trailer of your show, your um, film that you did, The Quiet Courage, the James Curtis Owen story. And it was really interesting. We talked about you know, what, how you really got started, like how long um, it took you to produce it. And, uh, but the interesting thing about that story is it seemed to have a lesson with it about um, 
determination and how to proceed. And as you know, with this show, we actually talk gear things a little bit still towards kids sure. and stuff like that. So what I liked about it is just his determination. And so what would you say if you're talking to kids about this story, about this film, what would they learn from watching this? I think they'd learn determination for sure, mm -hmm. perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that things don't always go your way, right. but you gotta have a, um, a goal that you're trying to reach. The uh, fact that sometimes you may have to take a step back. Uh, I mean, James was an incredible star uh, in high school and um, was a really good football player at Auburn, but he wasn't the star. Um, <clears throat> he took a back seat for the team and, and, and to this day, we have reunions for this particular team. Um, and James is the, the, the rock star of that team. I think everybody mm -hmm. understands the sacrifices that he made. Um, James is a minister now. Oh, wow. And so he, he always says the, the lessons he learned about perseverance and determination mm -hmm. and, and having his eyes on the gold have made him a, a, a better minister, a, a better man, a better father. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, because I, you know, I work at a uh, youth village and stuff. So I think just hearing that, I think the kids would, you know, get something out of that because sometimes they don't know, you know, like, oh, I don't think I can do this or I don't know or they get up, give up so quickly, yeah. you know. So I think that's really well, he important. He said, there's a statement he makes. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can imagine, you leave your home, your parents take you to college and drop you off. Right. You're in a strange place with strange people. There's nobody that looks like you. Right. There's no family. And um, one of the questions I asked him was, did you ever consider quitting? And he said, I quit every day for the first three years. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'd call my mom and I'd say, look, I'm, I can't do this. I got to come home. And, uh, and he said, you know, there were people who had gone before me who probably were good enough to play, but they couldn't play because the circumstances weren't right. There were people coming behind me, and so what kind of a lesson would it have been for me to quit? And um, that was, as I said, I, being there with him at that time, we were aware that this was bigger than us. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was about um, <clears throat> the state of Alabama. It was mm -hmm. about uh, the Southeastern Conference because James was the first African-American athlete right in the state of Alabama, in the Southeastern Conference, in the state of Alabama, in the state of Georgia, in the state of Mississippi, probably in South Carolina, I think in Florida, and so on and so forth. And so he had quite a bit riding on his shoulders. Um, and if you think about it, uh, when he started, he was 18 years old. I yeah, mean, and who, <laughs> who wants to deal with that when they're 18 years yeah. old? Um, but um, I, I think, um, you know, he met his wife at the university, so there, there are a lot of mm -hmm. pluses. And there's some funny moments in there as well. <laughs> I think it's interesting what you said too. I think a lot of times with kids and adults too, they think of themselves not really like, a, they don't see the big picture. They think, well, you know, if I do this, you know, just affects directly around me. It's like, no, you don't know what you do can affect somebody else and can touch somebody else. So mm -hmm. you may just seem like that one person, but actually touch each one. It could be going in a positive direction mm -hmm. or even a negative direction. So it just depends on what you do with it. So it's kind of interesting. I, I think now when we have, we, again, we, we, were, we played on some really special teams mm -hmm. um, that were really good. We, we were finished in the top ten three of the four years that I was there. And um, so to have, the, when the guys come back, perhaps the guys who weren't aware of how special this was at the time, mm -hmm. they're aware of it now. Yeah. And... Um, they're also aware of the role that they play in it, and and that um, there was there were some guys who were very very in tune to what was going on. There were some guys who were oblivious to what was going yeah. on. <laughs> but we're all we're we have a saying, and and that is that we're teammates for life. And uh, you know, I I always used to say initially that um, we had um, great teammates and didn't have a lot of good friends. But now they're great teammates and we're all good friends. And so it's just a, it's kind of a, a wonderful way that things have progressed over the years. Oh, that's cool. Um, you actually also gave us some pictures of like a ceremony that you did with the event. So how did that go? Oh, it was great. We had a premiere on Auburn's campus. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, we had about, I think the, the auditorium sat 350 people. We had to bring mm -hmm. uh, the chairs in. All the people from the film were there. Oh, cool. um, and as a part of the ticket price, uh, people got a poster with uh, James's image on it, and that poster was signed by everybody in the film. Cool. I actually was going to bring one over here to give Aww. to you, so I owe you a poster. Okay. Uh, uh, it's probably sitting on my counter at home, but I'll get it to you. But um, it was just a, an amazing event. Um, it's been... Um, running on several broadcast outlets and and hopefully it's going to run in this area we'll we'll hopefully we'll do a screening down here or we'll do a broadcast down here. that would so. be so cool yeah. so what's your like um your goal for this for this film and maybe even your future film to get as wide of distribution as we can mm -hmm. um um we've gotten inquiries from people uh of course throughout the southeast region but also across the country um, I, I consider myself a storyteller. I just, I, I like to tell stories and uh, this is a story that I, I think uh, resonates with people. You know, if you can, anytime you're, you're overcoming odds, any, mm -hmm. anytime you're in a situation where you, you're trying to not just make things better for yourself but make them better for others, it's just a story uh, that, that people uh, uh, resonate with. Right. It's just a human drama. And so <laughs> people are people are in tune to, to, to seeing a person overcome the odds, but not just for themselves, for somebody else. That's so, true. Yeah. And you know, you're doing an awesome job. And I always give props for people, especially in our town, because our town's, you know, so small, you know, well, we have a bunch of little small towns around here, Fort Wall and Shalimar and and even in a Pensacola area, but it's kind of cool to see someone doing something that huge. And I think people don't really realize, like, wow, there's someone in the area that's, you know, producing, you know, films, that's, you know, acting, and that's, you know, you're even affecting this area in a positive way. And well, I'm excited to see what, you know, new projects, and maybe even the show is a positive thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so strange, like, because I actually run into people, it's like, I saw you on TV or a show, and I didn't really honestly think that, you know, this show would be like that and I'm noticing I'm seeing like an impact on it good that's so, great yeah that's great. it's pretty cool well so. I always say you can get there from anywhere <laughs> and yes, uh, with the technology that we mm -hmm. have now um, I've got an audition for a film project tomorrow but I'll do the audition uh, in my office uh, <laughs> we'll cool. shoot it in my office and we'll email it to the agents and uh, that's cool and then you know sometimes they hire you straight from the tape sometimes mm -hmm. you'll end up having to go in uh, a lot of the Big, I was thinking today, the job I did on Fight Club, uh, I never put it on tape. Um, the uh, Miss Everest boys, I put it on tape. We sent it to Los Angeles. They hired me from the tape. So it just really depends. Yeah. You know. And then you got to be in it a long time, you yeah. know. you, you got to be in it. Uh, uh, my first job was 1983, and so... Um, I've been doing it for a while. I've had a lot of people ask you, especially kids, I can imagine, that's like wanting to go into this business. So we're like, well, how do you guys, how do I do it? But how do I get there? Or just You know, like, there's no one way. Yeah. You just have to determine that that's mm -hmm. what you want to do and figure out a way to go about it. But you have to understand, I tell everybody this, and, and one of the great things of going into it uh, later in life as opposed to going to it earlier in life uh, is, first of all, I understood that, that it was and is a business. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very difficult business. And so my whole focus was uh, the business aspect of it, uh, getting in the guild, uh, earning a retirement out of mm -hmm. it, by uh, playing my health insurance mm -hmm. through it, <laughs> yeah. uh, all the benefits that are available, and then getting just a great, great journey. Um, also, I think when you go into it early, you really have to be balanced. Uh, it's what I do, it's not who I am. Mm -hmm. And um, I keep myself pretty balanced right. um, with that because you can get, um, you know, you're making, you're making pictures. Um, we don't cure cancer. <laughs> and so you have yeah. to kind of keep it in perspective. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But you yeah. make people happy. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you make them happy. <laughs> and they, yeah, I love, and I love doing it. Yeah. I really do. I think it's just uh, a, a great way. And, I mean, I've got some... I've had some wonderful adventures and uh, uh, been with the biggest of stars and it's just been um, one of those 
wonderful rides. Uh, it's the business has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of business in the southeast now. I've probably I've shot all over the southeast, uh, Alabama, uh, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, we don't shoot as much in Florida because we don't have a tax incentive uh, <laughs> in the state of Florida. Hint, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> those legislators out there. Um, That's kind of uh, cool. Are they watching the show? That's awesome. <laughs> they'll, they'll hear about it one way or another. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a great way to make. I think for kids, you know, everybody wants to, 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 to hit it. Yeah. And. Um, you, you have to be persistent. Mm -hmm. You have to do exactly what James did. And yeah. uh, I'm at the point now where I, I'm very lucky that, that I generally do the jobs I want to do and don't mm -hmm. do the jobs I don't want to <laughs> do right now. Uh, you know, when you've been doing it for a while, I mean, I've been a judge in about five different shows, so I have no interest in being <laughs> a judge uh, unless he gets to go home. You know, a judge yeah. never goes home. Um, and so if he gets to go, I said, mm -hmm. if this judge goes home, I'll play him. If he doesn't go home, if he just sits in the courtroom and says sustain, overruled, yeah. I'm not interested. Well, that's interesting what you said about, you know, um, persistence and stuff. I think that's really key to a lot of things in life, really. You know, with kids, if they have a goal in mind, you know, to keep pursuing it, you know, persisting and, and with whatever their goal is, because a lot of times people are like, oh, well, that didn't work, so let me stop. But just keep going at it. And, and being persistent, but also be willing to veer your course. Yeah because you may be on course and that you may find a roadblock. True. And so you figure out how to get around it, over it, under it, or take another path and, and, and continue to work mm -hmm. on your path. You know, none of it's gonna be easy, whether you're in, you're in acting or aerospace engineering, it, there, there exactly. are gonna be no, challenges. No shortcuts, yeah. even, even though we try and, to find them, but. <laughs> and and just, just, um, mm -hmm. just stick to it and be willing, you know, um, I said I've made a good living at it, but when I did community theater, community theater doesn't pay you any money. Mm -hmm. But I learned. Exactly. I learned my craft. I learned. I got to play the lead in all the uh, theater I was in. Uh, what I utilize now, I learned that then. Is, that is and, awesome. And so you, you get, you, you, money isn't the carrot. That is all true. the time. You know, that is really awesome. And you know what? Our time is actually up. But before that, I know you wanted people to uh, have opportunity actually to get the film. So uh, how will they get the film if they're interested? Uh, go to my website, bestgirl.com, B-E-S-T-G-U-R-L. I'm from Alabama. We say go. Bestgirl.com. And you can order it off the website. Well, thank you so much for You're being on welcome. the show. Even though you are originally were on the show. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching us here on Insight.